Good morning. Come on and glorify the name of our God this morning. Our God is truly worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be exalted. He's worthy to be magnified and our soul glorify him this morning. If you can take a second right in your house, right in your living room, while as you're getting dressed, you're putting your makeup on, you're drinking your coffee, whatever you're doing as you are joining us on this morning, take a second and just lift up the name of Jesus. Take a second and give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. Take a second and just thank him that he woke us up this morning. He set us on our way. We are grateful for this ending of the second month of this new year, entering into a new month. And we just want to praise him. We just want to bless him. We just want to call his name mighty. We want to call his name excellent. We want to tell him how good he is this morning for his mercy endure it forever. And we bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God. I feel a praise in my spirit this morning. I feel a worship in my spirit. I don't know what God's getting ready to do, but I know God is doing something great. And if we can just wait on him and trust him in this season, then there's nothing that is impossible for our God to do. So just release a praise right where you are. Open up your mouth right where you are and thank God as we bless God for this service, for the show. Should I say as we get ready to discuss health and wellness and being better about what we do for this temple that God has given us. And so God, have your way on this time. Have your way as we discuss. Give us wisdom. Let your people be edified that watch us today, God. Let them leave, oh God, with the tip let them leave father even now with a new habit a new a new way of looking at life a new methodology and how to deal with their life and their health and their overall god stability in jesus name and we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory we bless god today and we give him thanks hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah praise god i'm excited this morning to have on the show with us I'm, I'm excited to have on the show with us this morning, uh, Eden uh, Gilliam, amen. She is a esthetician, amen, because I absolutely made up a different name um, pre-show. So praise God, you guys didn't have to hear me massacre uh, this title, amen. Uh, but, <laughs> but Eden set me straight this morning, um, and and. We, we are in this, this series, and, and as we know, God has, has, has named our year and petitioned our year a year of recovery. And we want to make sure that if God is saying this is recovery, we know that God is not one-dimensional, which means that recovery is in every aspect of your life, right? You need to recover in your business. You need to recover in your health. You need to recover in your finances. You need to recover in your relationships relationships. You need to recover in the visions and the dreams and the aspirations, right? You need to recover in your spiritual walk with God, your prayer life, your worship life, the ministry that God has birthed in your spirit, right? It's recovery 360, right? In every area of our lives. And so as we started this year, our, our January show, we really talked about business and, and, and getting the, the ground running with the things that God has birthed in our spirits and making some bold moves, right? Because anytime God gives you something to do, it's always going to challenge you one, and it's going to require a bold move, number two. And that bold move is a faith move, right? And so we talked about that, and, 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 and uh, uh, Minister Lauren Morris was with us, and she gave us some really g great tips, and she, she really showed us her process and her step. And we have Eden on this morning. And at first I want her to, like, I don't know if everybody knows. I, di I didn't know, and maybe I'm just slow it's possible i didn't know what an esthetician was um before meeting Eden. um i knew what the, a t an esthetician did but i didn't actually know the name so i think some of us don't know what that medical terminology or the rightful name for like a skincare specialist that deals with you know so if you can explain to the people what that is um so that they have a better understanding and then we'll, we'll go a little bit deeper what's the difference between like an esthetician and a dermatologist because we both work on skin 
So for one, dermatologists are doctors. Um, we are licensed by our state, so we take like a state board exam, we get our license, and we work on the epidermis of the skin. So that's the very top layer of the skin. Um, so we can do everything from like facials and deep pore cleansing treatments and chemical peels and microneedling and all the fun things you see um, on social media. And um, so can a dermatologist, whereas dermatologists m mostly don't are not as hands on with the skin as estheticians are. Um, dermatologists can diagnose skin um, issues like if you have eczema or psoriasis or there's all types of things that could go on with the skin. We cannot diagnose those things, but uh, a dermatologist can diagnose and they can prescribe um, controlled substances like prescription meds. Whereas for us, we focus more on like the hands-on treatment, the very superficial layers. We're like your... Uh, like a nurse to a doctor, if, right. if that makes sense. So we're like the hands-on person with the skin that focuses on, like, treatments and more time. Um, so that's an esthetician. Awesome, awesome. Just trying to make sure that I get that in there. Let me take one more sip. Um, wonderful. Thank you for giving us that breakdown. Thank you for giving us that breakdown and that understanding between the two because I think that's been a confusion yeah. a lot and sometimes you just don't know, right? So you're like, am I, is this double duty? Am I doing the same thing twice if I'm seeing my dermatologist and then I go see, you know? I think you need both. Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, when it comes to dermatologists, they're going to do like your skin cancer checks, which are very important, especially for African-American skin because we don't get into these things like this. But mm -hmm. when we do get a skin cancer, it's also very aggressive. Mm -hmm. And it's just totally different with us. So it's Which is, which is... We, 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 we don't know that, right? Because we're naturally prone to believe that since we have melanin, mm -hmm. we don't, we're not as susceptible, let mm -hmm. me use that terminology, to these skin cancers mm -hmm. as somebody without the melanin that we have. But the, the thing about it is, is that like back in the day with our grandparents, great grandparents, their world was different than ours. Their mm -hmm. ozone layer was more fortified than ours. We've mm -hmm. been having so much breakdown over the years that now we have to kind of start playing more defense mm -hmm. in terms of how we protect ourselves. Right. Because it'll show up in our fingernails mm -hmm. a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So like these deep black lines and these black marks that come up in the nails, which is something that dermatologists um, treat. Mm -hmm. scalp issues that's something that a dermatologist can look at but a lot of times skin cancers on African Americans come up on like the bottom of the feet the palms of the hands in the nails which are things we don't pay attention mm -hmm. to so on the bottom of the feet what would something like that look like so just it starts as just like a spot mm -hmm. Um, and then it'll start to get bigger. So there are certain um, markers that you can look for for spots on your body as, like, if they're changing. So it's, like, um, the perimeter of it, the color, if it um, has asymmetry or not, you know, mm -hmm. like, things that are broken. Mm -hmm. But that's where a dermatologist comes in. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it comes to, like, Caucasians, you see their skin cancers or precancers more on, like, it's a texture thing. Like, I could look at a client and something looks a little rough or it just has a look to it. And I'm like, you should go get this looked at. Mm -hmm. So I think that you, you need both. But so, I, so more like your daily check-in would be with your esthetician mm -hmm. and then, like, your, your annual checkups would be with your dermatologist. Exactly. Makes sense. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Question, um, how did you get involved? Um, you know, was this a leading from God? Was this just something that was a burden for you? What, what, what was that journey for you? Because it's, you know, it's amazing to see the diversity of God, right? And, and how God leads us into different things and different places and burdens our spirit differently. And of course, our, all of our journeys are different. Um, how what was that journey like for you? And and while we're while I'm discussing this with um, Eden, if you have more questions, because I find it very interesting, right? The whole discussion about the esthetician versus the dermatologist. How can we start to recognize certain things? Because you know, as we get older, and and you know, when 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 I jump the forty uh, area, hallelujah, it's a blessing, amen, praise God. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the new twenty. So when I jump that forty area, um, you you. <laughs> You do see some 
changes, right, yeah. in, in how your body processes food yeah. and so on. And we'll get to those questions too. But if, if these questions, right, as she's explaining this, gets in your thoughts, pl please drop them in the chat so that we can answer the questions for you. But, but yeah, let us know that journey. What was that like? So I actually started off as a teenager. So my background is more of like I loved science mm -hmm. and I loved beauty on the low. Mm -hmm. I was more like I loved science. I loved to cook. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very hands-on, so I love working with my hands, and I'm results-oriented. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually not a peop. I'm not. I don't <laughs> want to say I'm not a people person. I'm a. I'm not a group person. Mm -hmm. I'm like a good one-on-one. -on -one. Like mm -hmm. I'm more of a little kind of introvert. A mm -hmm. little bit. I like stay to myself. So. Um, being an esthetician was kind of like all those things in one. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's not, but the cooking aspect is like you have to find a recipe of different ingredients in terms of what is going to work for this. Like mm -hmm. being hands on, hands on, you get to like deal with people, touch things, like mix things, and right. you know. So it was like scientific. So it's kind of like everything that I liked in one. I always had an entrepreneur spirit, so I actually started very young too. Like by the time I was 20, I already had like a location. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because thinking back, I started working on my business plan at Lauren's kitchen table. Minister oh, wow. Lauren Morris, I was like 19 years old. Um, and I started working on my business plan at her kitchen table. And then a few months later, um, God opened like some doors for me and I was able to like rent a space next door to um, my hairstylist from when I was young. Mm -hmm. And I just started from there. So mm -hmm. it was like a plan and then right. plan and pursue. Right. And, and, and there we are. Like our last show was about that planning. And, and again, if you don't. It's it, it's great to have discussions about what God showed me, what God told me. But if you don't put a plan to execute the vision, then you're just filled with potential, but you'll never make that potential purpose. And you don't want to be just a person full of potential, but never actualize yeah. or make that potential now become purpose driven right. and results driven, right? You, so many people in church are filled with potential and it's like, okay, so what are we doing next? So don't be potential filled without purpose driven, right? You want to have that, which is great. Um, that's wonderful. So I, I want to go back again to, um, this whole interesting conversation about the skin and so on. How much as an esthetician do you notice that, um, the damage that people come to you with are either hormonal mm -hmm. or food-based mm -hmm. or chemical-based in terms of what they're utilizing in their daily activities. I mean, how would you break down that percentage so that somebody, you know, can be helped in trying to do things different, especially in this year of recovery? So definitely I would say 60% are from – lifestyle and like internal triggers mm -hmm. and it would sound it would seem not because when you look at the way that skincare is marketed it's always as if you're going to use this product for this and this product for that and put on this and this should be a routine where people the understanding is that your skin is an organ number one it's one of it's the it's largest, the largest organ organ of your body mm -hmm. and it's one of the few that you can actually see so the one thing that I say to my clients all the time is that if 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 this is what we can see, right, based on what is coming out, imagine what is going on in the inside that mm -hmm. we can't see. Right. And that's the bigger issue mm -hmm. because your skin is part of your excretory system, so it, it excretes things. So when it's not coming out through sweat, when it's not coming out through one or number two, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna, it has to come out some, some way. way. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing about God. He, he has created our bodies in a way where we have lymph nodes. We have all of these different ways to eliminate, to get to stay healthy, mm -hmm. that if, if it's resorting to this, then what else is off that, Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is internal. A lot of it is stress. Um, there was a study that was done on two um, women who were identical twins. Wow. So they almost have like the same DNA, mm -hmm. like same everything. But when it came to their aging process and things like that, one had one specific lifestyle, one smoked, and their their DNA actually became altered and broken. One, one aged faster, one. So uh, it's. It's all from the inside. 
which is interesting, right? Because your your DNA should be the pattern of your life's journey, right? So we should be able to read your DNA today and say at 50, you're going to be looking like this and this will happen and this will happen. But as you just said, the DNA, which is interesting to know, right? That the DNA coding can be broken based on how we live. Now that'll preach. Hallelujah. I just, I just want to drop that right there. That, yeah. that will preach, right? God can write the code, but how you live can damage how that code right exists and how the progression of it yeah. or the decline. That's a big one. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. ma That's major. Yeah. Because sometimes I think that we have this sense of like, oh, well, my mama had good this and this, you know, but the things that we do and practice every single day make a huge difference. Yeah. You, you said something, you said 60% is lifestyle and internal triggers. Mm -hmm. Can you tap on that a little bit? What, what would you say is an internal trigger that then does show or present issues on the skin, how it heals, mm -hmm. how, it keeps its luster. I mean, I've seen people, um, you know, whose skin just looks dry mm -hmm. or gray or dull, right? Versus like somebody who you can tell they're taking care of their mm -hmm. skin because it has a certain luster. It has, you know, it's not oily, but the color is bright. I don't know if that make if I'm making any sense. H how much? What What is that internal? What are some of those things that you would call internal triggers? That in particular is gut health, mm -hmm. right? Which, which, what it, when you say that? When you're talking about like the luster of someone's skin, mm -hmm. like if it looks like hydrated or dewy or healthy, that is centered in your gut. So when mm -hmm. they say like it starts in your mm -hmm. ear, it's very true. Mm -hmm. But let's, we could take it back to science, mm -hmm. right? So if you were to see, um, it's called embryology, mm -hmm. and it's the study of like embryos and how they're, they form. So when you have like, you know, your zygote, your, you know, that mm -hmm. it starts to change. And as you see this embryo start to open up, right, the head and where the stomach is, is at the same, same place. place. Mm -hmm. So all the things that make up like your gut health and everything make up your skin, make up your brain. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times what is in your stomach, it triggers it because it's coming it's from the same, same place. place. Very interesting. So the things that we're eating, and a lot of times it's like we're consuming like a lot of meat. Meat has a lot of like um, antibiotics in it and stuff like that because they're trying to keep the bacteria off of the meat. So when we're ingesting it, it's killing the good bacteria we have, which is important. Some bad bacteria that's there is important too. Mm -hmm. Like everything has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And then it throws off the way that we're absorbing nutrients. So people think like, oh, well, I'm trying to eat well, but then – this is not working, that is not working, it's a gut issue. So mm -hmm. you're not even like absorbing things properly for it to get to into the bloodstream, to go here, to it's gonna get to the skin last. Mm -hmm. So so when it gets to the skin, it means that there's, the problem is, is yeah. it's already deep rooted. Because only a percentage gets to the, ends up in, in the skin a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So if you're not absorbing things properly, like that's a big issue. The number two, or I'd say the number one issue that I see um, that affects skin is stress. That's mm -hmm. going to throw off everything. So that would be one of those internal triggers. Absolutely. So internal triggers would be based on what does your gut look like, mm -hmm. and then internal triggers would also be based on stress. Your stress level mm -hmm. is huge. So uh, stress um, triggers like something called cortisone in the body. Uh, which is triggered for a few different reasons, but it also stimulates your oil glands to produce more oil. So then you start getting the breakouts. You'll see the breakouts on the forehead, like these different things. It's like chain reactions, but it's just a symptom of this, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of times I feel like, especially in the Northeast, we have these fast-paced lifestyles and we're always on the go and doing this and doing that. And we don't realize how our life is like very stressful mm -hmm. and it really, it ages you. Mm. Wow. So that's something to consider, right? When we talk about those internal, inter <laughs> and it, it makes me think deeper, right? When we talk about internal triggers and then how that impacts the, our skin and our gut health and all that stuff. Um, it makes me think about even triggers emotionally. Right, like because I'm sure that releases something in your body. I have a philosophy. Go ahead. 
Okay. And because <laughs> I'm like, Lord, I, because I feel like um, you see things, but it's de- it's a lot of times deeper than what you see. Mm-hmm. So I'll 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 say to Prophet is I'll be like. Prophet is who I, I, I got a philosophy. Like, what do you think about this? Because, you know, she does what she does. Right. So I, I, I'll I see people that have vitiligo. Explain. Um, <laughs> like For the people that, that don't you. know what that means, for thank you. <laughs> um, like Michael Jackson or your, um, like, when you have the blotches okay, of dark patches mm-hmm. of white, mm-hmm. right? So the absence of melanin, mm-hmm. right? So some people have it extreme. Some people have it across the neck, just little places. Mm-hmm. Or in my the Eden Gilliam philosophy, in my philosophy, right. that is caused by trauma. Mm. And the your melanin, our melanin, is a protective mechanism. So we go out into the sun, we experience like heat. Your body says something's wrong here. Let's excrete melanin to protect the area. That's how we get a tan. Right. I believe that when you're in situations where you feel vulnerable, you feel not protected, you go through trauma, people start to have vitiligo. Mm. Some people have that from birth Mm -hmm. because I believe the mother experienced extreme trauma when the baby was in the womb. Mm -hmm. And these things Mm -hmm. present themselves. And and it's funny. We're talking about this from a natural perspective. and And I want us to consistently understand how... And, and I hope for people who are watching who, who are spiritual and know their Bible and know the word that you're you're marrying some of these ideas with how the spirit man works. Right. And when we start thinking about the fact that, you know, the skin is this protective barrier, these things happen. So on, same thing in the spirit. Right. When we are spiritually triggered, when we're not praying right, when we're under warfare, there is that all of that presents itself as stress in a certain way and so this is why the lord in, encourages us right and 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 really um recommends and demands for us to walk in peace yeah. right if it be as at all possible within you right because you need that internal peace to keep the external self strong enough to fight any battles if the internal self is weak and damaged and broken down how is the if the internal self is like that how are we warring against anything how are we spiritually discerning anything right so it's it's funny we're talking about skin but there's so much of this that is married with you know i i I saw a holistic doctor once and and um, i went with a friend um who was struggling with you know just diabetes and a few other things but she was holistic and i mean she, she he sat before her and she looked in his eyes and she could immediately tell like this is off this is off and she never like touched him the, just from his eyes and how blood vessels were looking and dark spots were in his eyes and she was like oh this is going and what are you angry at i mean she even pointed to like anger spots that were presenting themselves yes. in the eyes yes. Irid- it's called iridology and i think it's fascinating <laughs> i like between iridology and like the study of mv I, it's fascinating like the ring around the eyes for inflammation and different medications that you're with make certain deposits on the iris like it like it's very like because it's almost like everything in the body maps something else like i love reflexology and how that that's so cool, and the same thing with the mapping of the eye. So I think that's like the soul the it's windows that's to the soul. That that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. So so let's let's touch on foods for a second. Okay. Let's touch on foods, and and so we talked about these emotional internal trigger stress. So, but let's touch on foods because we like to eat what we like to eat. Yeah. But what we like to eat don't always like. It doesn't us. like us <laughs> back. Yeah. So let let's let's touch on that and how that impacts because people are like I want good skin I want youthful skin I want this but they also want to eat whatever they feel like so yeah. can we talk about how that impacts and how much of your clients you see that that you have to have these let's talk about your diet you yeah. know conversations so when I first started out as an esthetician I was just an esthetician but I realized the connection between diet and skin so I actually went um, overseas to London to study skin nutrition um, I didn't want to study it here because I feel like <laughs> mm, I get it. Mm-hmm. Big you know, pharma. You know, um, Big pharma. Our food is very different. Mm-hmm. Um, who's writing the textbooks for us health wise? 
Big Pharma. It's all, you know. So I, you know, went somewhere else. And when I was even there studying, I was like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> There's no sugar. In. Like, there was a vending machine. And the vending so. machine had green tea in it and seaweed chips. And this was like 13 years ago. So I'm like, what is well, well, I mean, it's here? I mean, it's why they say they, you know, we all suffer in America from obesity yes. and so on. Because, I mean, they... Our hospitals now, I don't know if people know this, but have adopted where in most of the vending machines it's like sugar-free, water, blah, 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 because it's now like a state mandate to try to minimize the amount of sugar, even to bring the sizes down to what we consume. You know, like we are buying 12 liters of this, and it's like, why do you need 12 liters of sugar, right? So anyway, let's, let's get back to no, the... No, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah. And so basically I studied skin nutrition to incorporate that into what I give to my clients and so food whatever you're feeding yourself whether it be physical like what you're watching what we were whatever you're consuming is going it's gonna manifest it's gonna show and I don't think that we realize until we go someplace else how tainted our food is here and even what we're told is healthy is not but I do think that God always gives us remedies mm -hmm. for, for things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always have a study. <laughs> so there was this study. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and, and when I heard about this and, like, started really researching it, I was shocked because I had never heard this before. And it's this compound that's called sulforaphane, mm -hmm. right? And it's found in, like, um, cruciferous vegetables. So your Brussels sprouts, your kale, your broccoli, your sprouts, right? Mm -hmm. Um and it's so powerful that even people who were smokers, if they had just a small amount of this compound, like in what they're eating a day, they were able to avoid getting lung cancer wow. and um, um, pancreatic cancer, like all of these things just from this. Mm -hmm. So I feel like sometimes the hard part is that people tell us what not to do what not to have, but never like replacements, oh, alternatives, right. mm -hmm. or small changes to make that make a big difference. Mm -hmm. well, what are three foods you think people should incorporate in their diet that they can do today? Broccoli, mm -hmm. Brussels sprouts, mm -hmm. and kale. Mm. Coconut water. Mm -hmm. I'm a coconut water uh, fanatic. Yeah. <laughs> you know me too. How coconut hallelujah. water. Mm -hmm. Um cucumber water like juicing things on your own and just having something raw every day like raw food mm -hmm. because the raw food helps with like your probiotics your gut health the healthy bacteria it's what your body understands and recognizes we have to stop eating out of the microwave because it alters the chemistry of the food so when we eat it your body doesn't even recognize it oh wow if you microwave water Okay, and water a plant with that, it will die. But we're eating out of the microwave every day. Wow. I stopped eating out of the microwave years ago because it's terrible. And when I see someone, no shade, but putting the formula in the microwave to heat it up, I, I yeah. want to just yeah. jump out of my skin. Listen, in Jamaica, they say, put it in the pot on the stove and put it in. Listen, that's how we did it, honey. That's how we was doing it. Because quick is killing us. Yeah. No, but that's a, th the instant lifestyle is not, <laughs> it's instant death. <laughs> it's poisonous, right? Um, I have a question online for you. Should our veggies be organic? So I understand that when it comes to organic vegetables and fruit, there is um, a cost associated with that that everyone can't always afford. If you can go for it, yes, but you should look up what the dirty dozen are, and it's a specific list of fruit and vegetables that have the most pesticides sprayed on them, and then others that you don't really need to buy organic because you're not eating the skin or the skin is thick enough that it's not really getting through. So I think with everything, we need to use strategy. So if you can, do that, but also be mindful of what, what, is heavy in pesticides like your spinach, your, sh your um, strawberries and stuff. Get those things organic. Make sure that you're always, like, washing everything. But, like, have a strategy because it does get expensive, and we want to be here for the long haul. Um, so look up the list of the dirty dozen so you know which ones you absolutely do need to get organic and those 
That is not necessary. So look up the list of the dirty dozen. That's the those are the fruits and veggies. I like that. That has been sprayed with the most pesticides. I have another question for you. The questions are rolling in. Um, how do we know we're consuming healthy produce? I think you just kind of answered that. So um, it's interesting because <laughs> <laughs> you can't crack yourself up and not tell us why. I had, I had, <laughs> I had a dream that the soil was contaminated and they did like this big recall at Whole Foods. And mm -hmm. I was like, Lord, I need to really get this green thumb going so I could grow my own stuff. Mm -hmm. My dream is to like have like a hot house so I could grow in the winter time because mm -hmm. you know we live in New York, but right. I feel like we really have to practice growing our own. Like that's how you know mm -hmm. that it's healthy because yeah. you do it yourself. Yeah, because it's really hard to tell, right? And I think the only way is, you know, as you said before, one wash everything and then things where you consume the skin like your strawberries blueberries you know blackberries you know spinach those things you want to make sure that you are I, I was watching something funny enough last night where she washed her those veggies and fruits that are you know we consume the skin because like a banana orange you don't consume the skin right. you're gonna peel it so that's fine mm -hmm. um but the other ones, she was washing it in highly alkaline water. So like your 11% alkaline, and it actually, she saw the pesticide come off, whereas just regular, you know, tap water just did not clean the pesticides because some of it is oil-based mm -hmm. pesticide so that it doesn't lift, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it, it protects it for a long period of time, but then if it's oil-based and it's seeping into the pore of that fruit, mm -hmm. then it's already saturated, right? And so she was washing in alkaline water. So if you know you're buying those kind of fruits, washing it in your alkaline, washing it everything, but washing those in alkaline water, the acidity, acidity will help to remove some of that pesticide that is on the skin. Which goes back to of what we put on our skin and the health and the ingredients that are in the products that we are using because yes. it seeps right in. Yep. Right? So uh, we can't worry so much about organic fruit and what's sprayed on that and then we're spraying all types of stuff on, on our skin. Yes. So we got to be careful with the makeup, so ladies. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. Are there certain foods that are not good for the skin? Are there certain foods that are not good? Oil, anything too fried or greasy? Let me just, let me just, I can start that list off. Go ahead. So one thing um, is that uh, there's a difference between, everyone is different, right? Um, but one thing I will note is that there's a difference between being allergic to something and being intolerant to something. And this is a big thing. When you're allergic, like someone who's allergic to nuts or something like that, they'll consume it or breathe it in. Their throat will close. They'll break out into hives. You see it immediately within minutes. Mm -hmm. When you have an intolerance to something, you can consume it. And then weeks later, something will happen. And because it was so far apart, you don't connect the dots, mm. right? Um, similar to like uh, most African American black people, melanated people are lactose intolerant, mm. right? Which wreaks havoc on mm -hmm. us. Like all the dairy and stuff like that, it creates a lot of mucus. And once again, skin is what I do, but it's like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> like if everything else is like. If we're not balancing out the rest of our lives. If mm -hmm. everything else is going haywire mm -hmm. on the inside, who cares if your skin looks nice or not? If it's doing damage to other things. Right, right. That's more important. Right. Um, but I think s keeping a food journal is important. Like just so, because sometimes I'm on the go, you're just eating. And <laughs> you don't even know what mm -hmm. you're taking in. Like just to kind of slow down and be more conscious of what you're doing, like how you are feeling, what you're doing to take care of yourself. Did How many hours are you sleeping? You know, like, are you doing any other self-care things? Like, do your feet hurt? There's so many, mm -hmm. like, we have to really start having a lifestyle to learn how to really take care of ourselves. Right. Because life moves so fast. We're doing so much. We're here. We're there. We work. We have kids. We, you know, have sight. It's like, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. So. And and that dairy, I just want to tap on that. I, I realized a number of years ago, because I'm a coffee drinker, as many of you guys know, and I used to drink half and half, right, you know, in my coffee. And I I would get such horrible acid reflux just 
just constantly. And of course, the mucus and the drainage and the blah, 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 blah. And then I switched to, you know, the non-dairy. So the almond, the oat, you know, um, I don't do soy as, I don't do really do soy because soy has its own issues. But the, you know, those kind of almond and oat is really what I do mostly. And I notice an instant difference. Like I can drink my coffee. I don't have acid. I don't have the mucus. My stomach is not groggily and doing all kind of things. So I have eliminated as much as possible dairy and I'm telling you the difference is amazing like the the the, the I see it the difference is amazing yeah. and now if I have like a second worth of dairy I'm I'm in, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mess immediately a mess so that's definitely something I would I I I live through that and I juice a lot. So, like, you know, I, I don't have a juicer if anybody wants to bless me. Praise God. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, have a blend, I have a blender, and I juice a lot of things for my kids and stuff like that. And you'll be surprised how it, much it does for your, your, your gut, your yep. energy level, your skin, right? And, uh, you know, it's, it's just amazing. Your ginger, your turmeric, your blueberries, your raspberries. You know, you want energy, juice yourself some raspberries, some blueberries, and drop a little ginger and lemon inside of that, and you will be like on a thousand, <laughs> like you just had 10 cups of coffee because it is like an energy booster by itself. So there are just a lot of different ways to incorporate new things in your diet. And as you said, paying attention because I suffer with or suffered with adult acne, and I realized as soon as I cut the dairy, I cut some of that out, and I do realize that when my stress levels are higher, I get the breakouts. Yeah. yeah. So it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Sure. Somebody was, um, <laughs> somebody said Derry and I broke up a <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Break up with Derry, honey. Amen. Kick him Amen. to the curb. Hallelujah. Um, uh, somebody said, I saw a video um, of uh, soaking fruits in the Bragg's vinegar. Uh -huh. Do Is that recommended? Um, I think that we can't just wash with water because it's not simple things that are being put on the fruits and vegetables. They're like waxes to make it shiny and this and that. And um, so <laughs> I see that green juice back there, sis. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so I think the Bragg's is, is fine. Um, the, your regular white vinegar is fine, mm -hmm. too. Some baking soda in there. They have fruit and veggie wash, but I'm big on ingredients. So when I looked at the ingredients, I was like, eh, I got to make this myself. <laughs> right, <laughs> I right. I want to save $4 for this. And, 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 your, and your apple cider vinegar is great for your gut. So, you know, as you get older, your body does not digest the same way as it did when you were younger. Mm -hmm. So as you get older, you do need assistance in your digestion. So sprinkling a little bit of apple cider vinegar on your salad or putting some in your water is a great way to help your digestion. And I, again, another thing I learned firsthand, c crossing <laughs> over the 40, you know, threshold there. Yes. Um, one last question that I have for you. What, um, what is the, the, the most popular issue that you find in men and women? Um, cause I don't want men to think we're leaving you out in terms of like, you know, skin or, or, or anything that comes across your table. W what is the, the number one or number two, one and two issue that you find in men and women in terms of their skin? The number one would be, uh, hyperpigmentation. The number two, and that's hyperpigmentation, like head to toe. Mm-hmm. How, how do you resolve that, though? Because I think hyperpigmentation is something a lot of people, that's the dark spots on your skin and things. I think it's something that a lot of people deal with. What are what are some, like, things that can, like, I've, s I mean, I've actually see clearing up now, praise God, the dark circles around the eyes, mm -hmm. you know. Which is totally different, depends. Okay. So when it comes to under eye circles, which a lot of people ask about that, there's just different causes. Like, some a person will say, well, I have, bags and then what they're talking about is just like a little hollow under the eye mm -hmm. which casts a shadow so that's like a depth issue mm -hmm. whereas like dark circles can be like a color like mm -hmm. you can pot potentially treat it topically then some dark circles are called like um like a vascular issue so it's like a hickey so you when you the b blood vessels are broken mm -hmm. and then it causes like a stain and that's so it depends so People, I unless you know the cause, people are say this eye cream doesn't work. But 
this eye cream is for topical discoloration when your issue is vascular. Mm. So you need to like have more vitamin K in your diet, eat more avocados, just take the vitamin and it will help. I love magnesium. It does wonders. Mm -hmm. It's good for your heart. It's good for digestion. It's good for muscle repair. It's good for um, vascular strengthening your capillary walls and things like that. I recommend magnesium to mm -hmm. everybody. Consult with your doctor. We are. <laughs> 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 we are. This is just our as my advice. This is not any professional. Uh, you know, you get what I'm saying. But it works really well. Um, especially for under eyes. But a lot of times we really need to s to s to get our Understand blood work what it done is. Mm -hmm. and see what we're deficient in and start working on that. Getting sleep. A lot of times if um, spicy food uh, irritates with the under eyes because mm -hmm. it's capillary, if you're like a wine drinker, like anything with a lot of heat um, will irritate if it's like a vascular issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how, what, what, what other kind of hyperpigmentation and what are some results to that? So hyperpigmentation, like I mentioned earlier, how it's formed is your your melanin is protective, right? So the same way we go on into the sun, your body says it's hot, let's excrete melanin to protect this area. But if you have on sunglasses and you're not getting these or you have on like a bathing suit, you're going to tan around it because the area doesn't need protection. Mm -hmm. When you experience inflammation in the skin, like whether it be a pimple or a burn, your body says something's wrong here. We're experiencing inflammation. Let's send melanin to protect the cells from damage. So it's like a little localized tan. Mm -hmm. So the same way in time, like, we get a nice tan and we're, like, happy in the summer and things go away, it fades, some things will fade naturally. Mm -hmm. But everything doesn't need to be treated aggressively. But if you want to help with your hyperpigmentation, you do need to wear sunscreen because it's only going to further, it's like any progress that you feel like you're making when you're out in the sun, gonna it's going to, because mm -hmm. you're not protecting your progress. Mm -hmm. That's a word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Protect <laughs> your progress, okay? See, birth and preachers, even as we were on a cup of joke. There we go. <laughs> yes, Lord. Protect your progress. Right. But, but, but so then what happens with, like, the underarms or the kneecaps or the elbows? It's something like for me. just natural <laughs> friction and stuff like that. Right. Like, we're sensitive. So mm -hmm. it's like we have to learn how to take a little more care. Mm -hmm. Everything doesn't have to be aggressive, but you can do chemical peels on the body. And it sounds scary, but it's not. Because a lot of the acids that you we use in peels are naturally occurring in the body, like your lactic acids and things like that. Um but just your consistent use of things at home, like your vitamin C, a little kojic acid does wonders. But your turmeric, a little what? Ko <laughs> kojic? Ko kojic acid. It works really what well is for this. It's a, it's an acid, but it works really well. What is it? Can you gotta help us. Is it a Church of God in Christ acid? Because you said oh, kojic acid, so, so we're just trying to figure out what you're talking no, about. It's kojic. <laughs> <laughs> We like, like you. We, should we? <laughs> <laughs> it's an acid. It's like a scientific name for a real acid. I never thought about that. But it's Kojic with a K. Oh, a K. got it. <laughs> yeah, but there's certain acids that's like derived from apples and almonds and things like that okay. that help. But that consistent use, like day, every day. Mm hmm. Is where you're going to see the results. Is where you're going to see the results and your sunscreen. Okay. To get your body to reabsorb. Like the melanin. We're okay here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Good. To, and you said the second thing you saw was uh, somebody asked before you answer the second one, somebody said Holy Ghost acid. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, somebody said it is um, recommended uh, is sunscreen SPF. Of course, that's going to be the recommended, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah, for so your SPF daily outside going. For your outside, I say 30 is fine, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you get down to the science, it's based on percentages. So um, 15 is like 92%. 30 is like 96%. There's no such thing as SPF 100. But when you get to like 45 and 50, it's like 0.5 percent more so don't pay more money for it spf 30 the the key is to reapply so if you're putting it on in the morning then just put on a little like you know rather than thinking that you're going to go with the spf 100 and you're good for the day you really need to reapply re that reapply so spf 30 and on your hands when you're going into the uv and getting these nails, nails done. because now we're triggering again when it comes to like skin cancers and things like that which is very aggressive in african-americans 
and that thing too is like you can have exposure in one place and a cancer can show up in your bikini line so it's wow. not always where you think well i'm always exposed here it can pop up somewhere else so we just have to be careful i was going to ask you about that doing the nails and then you know everybody does gel now mm -hmm. so this uv situation you is a have a glove you can put a glove on you can put sunscreen on um you can ask if it's led or uv but we just have to protect ourselves because at the end of the day a lot of the things are marketing people just want your money they don't care we have to be knowledgeable about what we're exposing ourselves to the things that we're doing so we can protect ourselves because oh. people they don't care i mean it's just super fun in the winter time too. It's yep, because yep. the UV j mm -hmm. UV rays are still. Active. And our ozone layer is just not what it was before. We're seeing a lot of breakdown, which is why it was 60 degrees last week, and now we're it's cold. So you know those things are changing. So we have to make sure. We're changing mm -hmm. with it, yeah. You said the second thing. So you said the first thing was the hyperpigmentation, and then you were giving us a second thing, but then we kind of cut you with a million questions. Well, one <laughs> of the most important would be hydration. So people think that dry skin is. Um, the lack of oil where it's like your skin a lot of times de is dehydrated and it lacks water mm -hmm. when your skin's barrier is healthy when it has like proper hydration it responds to everything better it can protect you better um, so we have to focus on water-based um, skincare products like your hyaluronic acids um, your glycerin your aloe like on the skin to mm -hmm. make sure that it has water mm. water Oil. Water because your skin. <coughs> if you would put oil and water, the oil is going to sit on top. Mm -hmm. So it's going to seal in whatever's underneath. So you can seal in dry, dehydrated skin. Wow. So you need water. You know, so layer. So I tell my clients all the time, like we layer our clothes to be warm. You layer and then you, you top it off with your favorite oil. You could just press it in and be blessed. <laughs> and then be blessed. All right. What are th what are three... Um, you know, from from a skin care specialist to the audience, what are three things that you would tell somebody that if you're not doing this, get this into your daily routine now? This is so exciting because it's not anything that anyone would think of. Okay. The number one thing I'm that write we them down. all need to have <coughs> is a sauna blanket. A sauna blanket? Absolutely. Okay. So... There was a study, guys. <laughs> okay. okay. There was a study. All right. So the study that is done is about increasing body temperature and, and that sweating and how it affects your whole life in a positive way. Mm. And how being in a sauna, which a lot of us don't have access to, but we can get a sauna blanket, what it does is it helps to heat your body in a way that it mimics moderate cardiovascular exercise. Ooh. In the same exact way, without jumping up and down, without hurting your knees, you got a bad back, I'm a little top heavy, I can't be jumping all over the place, okay? <laughs> but I need to do cardio. Right. But you lay in the blanket, it elevates your body temperature. And what that does is it like triggers like these heat shock proteins, which helps to get rid of damaged DNA. Mm. It helps with cardiovascular health, so your heart. It increases blood flow in your body, so it helps your brain. It um, helps to uh, limit your, so, so the, the consistency of using it. So say for instance, like a person who uses it once a week versus four times a week, it can um, all like, lessen your chances of getting dementia by 40 to 60 wow. percent wow just by consistently heating your body and sweating we're wow. wearing a lot of anti-perspirant -per deodorants we're not we, we are supposed to sweat like and, and no one wants to be sweaty you know we're, we ha we're professionals you don't want okay get it right we need to wash the deodorant, but God gave us lymph nodes in places because we have to eliminate this stuff, right? So we're not sweating. We might not have all the time in the world to exercise, but you can lay in a sauna blanket. It helps when it comes to muscles. It helps when it comes to bones. It's good for your brain health. It's good for your heart. Heart disease is the number one killer, and it helps to lessen your heart um, disease, getting heart disease, heart attack, and stroke by a large, per like 40-something percent. If I could lessen some, I'm... I Absolutely. Where can we buy that? So you can get them. They range, and they're not expensive. Um, they range between, like, let's say high ones, so, like, rounded to $200 to $600. There's one that's called... I have it in my... Um, the link in my bio. <laughs> okay. You can get it on an Amazon. 
Um, and it's called a sauna blanket. They're called sauna blankets. Okay. So you just lay in it some. You can take your arms out, but you can, like, train your body to get to – you know, get a little warmer right. and like Tolerant deal with level. Ho- mm-hmm. higher levels and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, r- it's really good. Like that's a number one thing because I wish I could exercise. Some people love to work out. I do not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> sometimes you got to do the things you don't want to do, but the sauna blanket does that. So that would be my number, number one. Okay. Number one thing. Okay. Keep that body. Listen, uh, you know, you know, Lori be on it. Lori said it is Amazon has one for one forty, guys. Just so in case anybody is looking, right? Yeah. So, uh, Amazon. What's your number two? Because we're running time. Number two mm-hmm. would be you need to have raw something raw every day. Whether Eat that's something like, raw every day. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I have a video of this chopped salad because when we were doing the the fast at the beginning of the year, I was like prompted, okay, let's journal it or you know, video it. And it's like this chopped salad that has kale, it has Brussels sprouts, it has broccoli in it. So all the things with Josephorophan, which helps again with that DNA damage and preventing these things from happening. And if you cut it up into small pieces, it's not like you're you're eating big leaves. So it's about making the food, I like to call it palatable. Col- culturally mm-hmm. correct. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because, you know, you got to work your way into this. So that would be my number two. Mm-hmm. Then my number three is you um, you have to exfoliate and you have to hydrate your skin. So exfoliation is going to be the foundation of every good skincare routine because if you have like dead dull skin, anything that you're putting on top of it is not really able to penetrate because it's like too much on top. Mm-hmm. So it's like you have to exfoliate. I like chemical exfoliants. I'm not really into scrubs, but that's a whole different conversation for another day. Um, and hydration, hydrate, 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 hydrate. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. We've got some good information. Now tell us where they can find you and look up some of these great recipes, get some of these. Cause I know you have some of these, um, face mask products. Yeah. You have products that we can purchase. So please, please tell everybody where they can access you, find your videos, your daily routines, things that they can follow you and, and really continue to get this education. So um, I have a website, but I have a link in my bio. So if you go on Instagram, it's in the description also. If you go into the description, I don't know if we're on YouTube or Facebook, but the in the description, my website is www.eve, like Adam and Eve, Milan, like Milan, Italy, ny.com. I am at Miss Eden G M S. E D E N G on Instagram at Miss Eden G M S E D E N like the garden G at Miss Eden G on Instagram and in the bio you can go to my online store you can follow my YouTube channel you can follow this YouTube channel because we're almost to like uh, 400 okay Mm -hmm. so follow the YouTube channel like subscribe if you're on Facebook follow this Facebook page we're almost to 2000 because this is evangelism okay so support like follow Pastor Mo on Instagram we're building here right so anyway, so <laughs> in the bio, at you can go on my Amazon store. You can find the sauna blanket. You can find my products. You can get a skincare consultation. I have a skincare studio in White Plains, New York. I would love to see you all and work with you and talk to you. And and we'll get stuff. all of this information loaded up. Um, don't worry, Eden operates all the stuff that we do here anyway. So she'll make sure you get all of her information <laughs> on YouTube. She'll make sure that it's on Facebook. Um, she'll make sure you get the information that we need. Minister Nicole will help to share it and get it out. Amen. I want to thank God for our media guru yes. in the back. Minister Nicole, always on it, doing what she do. Amen. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, online they're asking, what is the address of your uh, studio in, in White Plains? I'm at 143 East Post Road in White Plains, New York. So, it's the same street that the um, hospital's on, White Plains Hospital, and it's very close to Mamaronic Avenue. So, it's like right, very downtown White 143 Plains. 143 East Post Road. 143 East Post Road, yeah. Okay. So, I, I think somebody on, I think, um, I think, um, Lori said she needs a facial this week. Yes. <laughs> you, prom- you prompted the need for facials this week. Amen. Um, 
again, we want to thank everybody for joining us this morning with a cup of Joe Passmore. Really interesting stuff this morning. I don't know about anybody else, but I thought it was really impactful, really powerful. We're going to continue. This is one phase. Next next month, I'm going to have Phoenix come on. As a, you guys know, she is a, um, a licensed makeup artist, and so she's going to talk about, because we like to dress things up, yeah. but not. <laughs> right? So Eden has told us about the inside and taking care of that, but what products, as you said, we can look really cute, but then is after we ate the good salad and we drank the good blended mm -hmm. juice, are we putting deadly chemicals now on our face to beat it? And literally, we beat it, right? Don't <laughs> not beat it, like, but beat it, right? So when yeah. we're done taking that makeup off, we have more pigmentation, yeah. we have more break up, breakouts, and so she's gonna really talk to us about that. And then we're gonna also have on the show in the the following months to come, we're gonna have um, Toy is gonna come on, and, and you know she she's gonna bring her machine to talk about alopecia and all the different things that people suffer with in terms of like hair loss and and how do we get that stuff restored yeah. and then I'm, I'm also gonna have um they'll probably partner up on that show we'll also have Lori come in because she is not just a nurse meaning like she literally is a licensed new york state nurse yeah. um she's also spiritually my nurse um but oh. she is also a life coach and she does deals with like weight loss and how to regulate your diet and how to take that journey to a better lifestyle, right? We, we Again, this is our year of restoration, and it's not just about speaking in more tongues and doing, we want to holistically mm -hmm. be restored. We want to be restored holistically in, in the holy way, in our life way, in our business way, in every capacity, we want to be restored. So Eden, we yes. thank you this morning. This Any good. last words for, you, for the people before you go? Any last I words? have a tagline, and it's wear makeup because you want to, not because you have to. So it's not about covering things up. It's about making sure that everything truly matches what you want it to be, and you don't have to mask anything. So like, subscribe, share. Hit up Pastor Mo. She has a cash app. Support the show. She has a cash app. Support her. Support. Amen. We're supporting Milan Listen, today. This is what we're supporting today. Passimo teaches me how important it is to be consistent, and everything that she says that she – wants to do she does and I admire that she works very hard so even to have extra time with her is a privilege so Passimo thank you we love you darling we love you okay <laughs> support her cash app the show it's okay to support and for the guests that she's gonna have and for the all the great things that are coming but thank you for taking your time to tune in with us this yes. morning and we hope that you enjoyed your cup of joe with oh my god somebody <laughs> asks we have more questions we can't uh, 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 stephanie asked a question anything for men who suffer with acne do the same remedies apply so i don't know if you want to meet with her um, yeah, after yeah, church yeah. or consult with her directly. But I do know that men also have their issues, you know, with acne and uh -huh. things like that. So, yeah, so so Eden is here. Hit her up. Let her yep. do a consultant, um, a, a, a uh -huh. consult with her, a consultation with her, and she'll be able to give you a lot of these other great tips and, and, and lifestyle. Do you see what we have in the house? I mean, this is in the house, amen? So it's great of what we, we have. We're blessed with these gifts and talents in the house, and, and what better place to support who is in the house than we who are of the house, amen? God bless you. We love you. Continue to put a praise on your morning. Uh, thank you for joining A Cup of Joe with Pastor to Mo uh, this month. Don't forget next month we're back again the fourth Sunday of every month. We're on with a cup of joe with Pastor Mo. I'm trying to get Tabitha Brown to join us uh, <laughs> virtually so anybody who knows how I can get in contact with her, somebody tell Auntie Tab that Pastor Mo trying to get in contact with her. I would love for her to talk to us about how to keep your integrity as a believer when you get into that world of of course show business and all that thing and I just love the fact that she continues to keep God at the forefront and you know the Holy Spirit in prayer and she tells us about her fasting times all things that I think is important so I would love to get her on so anybody that can help me get to her I would love you for that have a wonderful day enjoy your service wherever you're going to church get up take a shower do your makeup if you want to you don't have to comb your hair Put something on. You ain't got to be churchy like me. You can put on some jeans and a t-shirt and go to church. Hallelujah. I love you. Have a good day.